presence of the Lord. Amen. Here on this Thirsting for God Thursday evening at Acts 29, Church unto God. 2913 Albany Avenue, Waycross, Georgia. Somebody say, we plan on getting wet in the house of God tonight. Psalm 65 and 9, the Bible said in the word of the Lord, he visits the earth and he waters it. God's been visiting this earth where we live in this region pretty heavily the last few days. But Psalm 72 and 6 said he'll come down like rain on the mown grass. Some ought to say the Holy Ghost will come down like rain. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't need an umbrella of unbelief. Tell them, say, go ahead and prepare to get soaked. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need his outpouring. Amen. We need his righteous reign. Hosea 10 and 12 said, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord that he may come and reign righteousness upon us. Amen. Metaphorically, Hosea the prophet declares when he prayed, when he sought the Lord, when God comes, he's going to come like a righteous rain. Amen. Acts 3 and 19 says repent. Oh, it's almost a curse word in modern Christian. Amen. Repent. Somebody say be converted. Somebody say be changed. You don't get changed unless you're willing to repent and turn from your sin. Amen. He said repent and be converted. And here's why. So the times of refreshing might come from the presence of of the Lord. Somebody say when God's people turn to him and turn from sin, God then in turn rains down like a refreshing rain. Come on somebody on his people. Praise God. And that's what this world needs. We need a righteous rain. Amen. And only he's righteous and only he Amen. Can change. Amen. The calloused and the cold and the indifferent and those that are bound by darkness. Somebody shout, only Jesus can do those things. That's why we're here tonight. This is our final fifth uh, travailing uh, thirsting for God Thursday service. Not meaning we don't come in here on Thursday and do what we've been doing. We know I pray we make it a holy habit. Amen. But uh, for the last five Thursdays, God has commissioned us since Sunday evening of Mother's Day when I preached in here Genesis 30 verses 1 where Rachel cried out to her husband Jacob. Now it's Rachel's cry and she cried out to Jacob but we, we take it as the church's cry. We cry out to Jesus and she said to him in Genesis 30 verse 1, give me children lest I die. She was literally talking about being able to birth a child. And she was so in travail, desiring to have children, to, to have a child be birthed from her womb. Amen. That she cried out to Jacob like it was his fault somehow. So we take that narrative, we take that revelation, and we apply it in the spirit. And we're crying out to God. Amen. In these travailing, thirsting for God Thursday services. Amen. Prior to our revival that's beginning next Wednesday. Amen. And, and this is what we're doing. We're crying out God give us children we're talking about born again born of the spirit transformed come on somebody converted and changed brought out of darkness give us children give us new birth hallelujah anybody hear the Holy Spirit amen and that's why we're here that's why we're here so you're going you're going to hear a lot of praying going on we're, yeah I'll preach and it'll be not you know the usual traditional delivery amen but the Holy Spirit amen is the one we're here for because we're crying out the very heart of God when we're crying out for souls to be saved. Somebody says it's the heart of God. This is the reward of his sufferings that people believe on Jesus and be saved. Acts 16 and 31 said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved you and your house. Somebody say that means believe on Jesus. You will be saved and your family. Somebody say all in the family. What a promise. And the jailer asked in verse 30 of Acts 16 he said what must I do to be saved? And that's why Paul preached to him from that prison and he said believe on Jesus. Somebody say believe on Jesus and be saved and ain't you glad he went on and he said not just you. Amen. I promise I'll reach your family. That don't mean when I believe on Jesus automatically anybody can to me get saved. No. People are not saved because I got saved but God says because you're now mine you get saved. Now I put you in a position with me that's right and when you pray things will happen. 
And when you cry out to me, I'll move. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, you can't tiptoe past the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, your seed can't outrun the Holy Ghost. Proverbs 11 and 21 said the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Isaiah 49, 25, God said, I'll fight with him that fights with you. And he said, I will save your children. Sometimes the enemy uses even our own seed and our own children to fight at our faith and to fight against the faith and even fight against us. But somebody shout, God made a promise to those who believe on him. He said, I'll contend, I'll fight, I'll contend with him that contends with you and he said I will save your children somebody shout God give us children lest we die oh give us the birth the new birth the second birth not only of somebody else's children but somebody shout I'm here tonight crying out from my seed crying out from my children to know him some of you got children they're grown they're running from God as hard as they can but I promise you tonight by the spirit of truth somebody shout they cannot outrun the Holy Ghost. You keep running to God and God says I'll make you a promise. They will find me. I'll make sure of it. Job 24 verse 22. Everybody say the mighty. He will deliver with his power. Somebody say the mighty. The word mighty there literally means the strong willed. The hard hearted. Hello? The head strong. Now, I know none of you were ever like that at all. I know none of you ain't got no kids like that at all. Hello? There may be grown kids just like that. But he said, and I'm going to say it the way the King James does, in, in, in Job 24, 22, God told me this. I can tell you right in the corner of my yard at 730 this morning where I was walking while it was drizzling rain when the Holy Ghost spoke this scripture and he said tonight is what I want you to say to my people before you pray he said he draws somebody say he draws the mighty with his power that's Job 24 22 and it says and he rises up and no man's sure of life now I'm going to explain this to you this is amazing somebody say he that's God somebody say that's the Holy Ghost somebody say he God, the Holy Ghost. Micah 2 and 7 says the Spirit of God is not straightened. That just means the Spirit of God is not limited. There can no demon stop the Holy Ghost when that person says, I want Jesus. Somebody shout, not even the demon possessed can be stopped from coming to Jesus if that person wants to come to Jesus. Even the man that had legions of demons in him in Mark 5 and 6, he still ran to Jesus and worshiped him. There ain't enough of devils to stop you from coming to Jesus if you really want him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And God delivered him from all those devils with one word, go. But so uh, they said to the spirits. And so hear, hear this. He, somebody say the Holy Ghost, draws. Do you know that word draw don't just mean he just, you know, casually. It, it don't mean nothing like that. It don't mean that, you know, just easy, you know. No, the word draw there literally means to drag. By the way, this is on a drag show you're going to find. We're going to drag the dragon out. Come on, somebody, and cast him out in the name of Jesus. Draw. It literally means to pull. Why do you think we stand and preach at a pool pit? Somebody say, welcome to the Holy Ghost drag show. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It ain't the drag queen. It's the drag king. The king. He knows how to drag somebody out of darkness. He knows how to drag them out of deception. He knows how to, dis to, to, to drag them out of all that debauchery and all that demonic activity. Somebody say the Holy Ghost can. Jesus said if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, the kingdom of God's come nigh unto you. Matthew 12 and 28. Somebody say the Holy Ghost is stronger than any devil. Oh, y'all believe it? I do because I'm a believer. Back to Job 24, 22. Somebody say, he draws the mighty. He draws. He drags. He pulls them out. Wow. That's what he done for you, Sister Janice. That's what he did for me. Look at somebody in Port Adam and say, if you're born again, that's what he did. He snatched you out of the lion's mouth. Woo! He drug you out of the ditch. Somebody, this even this week, even a saint, uh, felt like laying in the ditch and saying there's no use. Uh, amen, but here come the Holy Ghost and here you are tonight. He drug you out of it. Hallelujah. 
but he said specifically, he said he draws the mighty, the strong-willed, strong-headed. The one whose heart is so hardened, the mighty. And that word mighty literally don't just speak of a man. It's When you study it in Hebrew, it speaks of mighty men. It speaks of angelic beings. Now we know demons are fallen angels. So when God said in Job 24, 22, he draweth the mighty with his power, there's the glory. There's the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say with his power, he draws the mighty. Remember, draw also means drag. So he said, I drag the mighty men. In other words, it translates, I drag the fallen angels out of those, amen, whom they possess and have control over. Somebody say, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Friend, tonight when we pray, and we're praying for children, we're praying for sons and daughters, we're praying for mothers and fathers, we're praying for people we don't know, people we do know, hallelujah, people, amen, that we work with, amen, people that we know that live in the community, wherever, amen, or just somebody in the church or somebody watching online tonight, somebody shout, pray in faith, and know that when the righteous cry, the Lord hears them and delivers them out of all their trouble, Psalms 34, 17. Somebody say, welcome to a delivery room until Zion travailed come on for as soon as Zion travailed she brought forth her children Isaiah 66 and 8 and ladies you, you that's birth kids you know about what travails like it's the pain that comes and somebody say the pain don't come to kill you somebody say the pain comes to get you push to get you to push to get you to push somebody say we need to learn that we need to let the pain push us hallelujah why has it been so hard because it's hard labor oh glory to God but God said your labor's not vain in the Lord first Corinthians 15 and 58 somebody shout we're in here to push we're in here to pray until something happens oh hallelujah somebody shout this is a birthing room Room. Oh, glory to God. This is a delivery room. And it is time to push and time to press. Even Galatians 4, 19 says it right there. Paul is praying and he said, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. By verses 20, he said, I begin to even stand in doubt of you. Paul was saying to a church that had become apathetic, lethargic, sleepy, slumbering. Come on, somebody. Got into an unholy habit of missing God, missing times with God, taking for granted the presence of God and the people of God. Amen. He said, I warn you to the Lord, travailing in prayer and preaching the truth to you at the pulpit, at the pulpit, trying to drag you out. And many of you, amen, got delivered. God brought you out, he said, but it weren't very long after you got delivered. I started noticing you were going back to your old ways. Amen. You were starting to get back into some corrupt things. Your nature was not that of the new man. You were starting to resemble the old man again. And Paul said, here I am having to travail in birth for you again. Travail's not just about seeing people get born again into the kingdom. Sometimes the people of God start slumbering, getting slothful and somebody's got to notice it and it's got to bother them. It's got to cause them to travail and say God wake up the church. God stir up those Lord Jesus that are getting used to the dark that are called by your name. Because he said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. Hallelujah. Holy. So Paul said, I've had to travail in birth again. And by verses 20 of Galatians 4, he said again, he said, I stand in doubt. Paul was, Paul was a bold preacher. Amen. His preaching got him martyred. The early apostles, their lives was taken from them prematurely by persecutors because of the way they preached. I had a preacher years ago tell me, he said, if you was really preaching the truth, you'd bring harmony in unity everywhere you went. I said, brother, have you not heard Hebrews 4.12? We're preaching with a sword take the ass off of it you got a word come on anybody hear the holy ghost 
heard somebody say the other day they thought it sounded good very famous person they said I'm not a controversial person amen I get along with everybody I thought well you won't you ain't on this team because dark light and darkness never cohabitate God divided light from darkness in Genesis 1 4 and evil and holy never get along Jesus and Jezebel will never sit down at a table and reason a treaty come on somebody between the light and the darkness no somebody shout you don't reason demons out you cast them out we're in a warfare christianity is a warfare not some little amen sunday morning welfare there's a fight going on and we're to fight a good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life amen first timothy 6 and 12 and jude verses 3 said we're to contend for the faith that has once been delivered unto us i've been accused of being contentious but i'm not a contentious person i am a contender for the faith and there is no room for compromise come on anybody hear the holy spirit so somebody say we're here to travail for people to be born into the kingdom we're here to travail in prayer for those who have been born into the kingdom that's starting to look a lot like the world they were rescued from literally they're backslide we're here to travail for the church it's going to sleep. Look around. There's a lot of them sleeping. I'll just go ahead and say it. And if it offends them, I pray they get repent, get right. But we got a lot of sleepers in our church. They love naps more than they love his presence. You know, in Genesis chapter 4, the Bible said in the word of the Lord, don't you turn off. Genesis chapter 4, when God remove Cain who killed his brother Abel from his presence it said he went into the land of Nod someone say the land of Nod that's where we get the term today even to this day Nod North that's what happens when you leave the presence of God you start taking naps you start nodding off come on somebody you start laying out and laying off you you, you, you start holding back reclining come on somebody and declining where at once, not that long ago, you had a zeal that caused you to push and press. That's what Paul's saying. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm travailing for those that have already been born again. I'm, 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 I'm praying, hey man, glory to God, just like I did when I prayed for him to get saved. That's how serious it is because he knew a person could backslide and miss eternity with God. That's how serious it was and it caused him to travail. Somebody say it should burden us that people don't come to church. It should burden us that people we know or don't know that we're around don't know Jesus. That ain't born again. Come on, somebody, somebody shout. It should burden us if the Holy Ghost is restricted and can't be poured out in a service. Because this is where I'm going with this. We're here to travail in birth. We're here to cry out to God for the Holy Ghost and for souls to be saved and for the church to be revived. Because without the Holy Ghost, none of these things can happen to begin with. For it's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, Zechariah 4 and 6. Somebody say, none of these things we're here and preached can ever become possible until the Holy Ghost has full reign, complete supremacy over our life and over the church. This ain't ours, this is his. That's how it works. When Jesus came to every church in the book of Revelation, all seven of them, he opened up saying, I know your works. I believe he'd say to the modern church today, yeah, I've looked around and I see your works. I see your services. But do you want to see mine? Somebody shout, we need the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So that's the top priority of our praying. That's what the early church did in Acts chapter 1 and Acts 2. Before the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Ghost was poured out, they were there for one promise, one purpose, one reason. Luke 24, 49, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or clothed with power from upon high. They weren't there praying a bunch of prayers for 10 days, Sister Julie. They prayed for one, the Holy Ghost. I need your power. Because back to Job 24, 22, somebody say, he draws the mighty, drags them out of darkness, strong-willed, those that are rebellious at heart with his power. 
It's the Holy Ghost. The one that can deliver a sinner from their sin. It's the Holy Ghost. So the church needs the Holy Ghost. Or she's just a religious community, a little religious club. Not a sanctuary. Hallelujah. And you know it's a religious club because you can predict when it starts and when it's going in. It's on the clock. Somebody shout, it's time to clock out, church. Oh, glory to God. And let the Holy Ghost, let the Russian mighty wind come again. Because when the Russian mighty wind comes in, somebody say, the folks won't rush the mighty wind. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, it's time for thee, O oh Lord, to work. For we've made void your law. Psalms 119, 126. David said, God, it's time for you to come and do it's time for you to come with your divine doings. He said, because we've made empty this word and we've made it vain through our traditions of men. Matthew 15 and 6, what the commands of God. This word is powerful. It is quick. It can raise the dead. It's sharper than it to a sword, piercing even to the valley of the sun of the soul and spirit. And joints of marin is the learner of the intents and thoughts of the heart. Hebrews 4 and 12. Somebody say this word is... But this word can't do nothing until we act on it. Until we, and one of the acts we act on it with is we, this is the first act. Somebody say the first act is we get out of the way and we surrender to the Holy Spirit. And we yield to Him and say, I will not leave until you've come. I need you more than I need anyone else in this world. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So that's what we're doing. Because next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Evangelist Brian Bout will be here at 7 p.m. each night in our sixth year homecoming revival. Uh, then that following Saturday, which is the 24th of June, beginning at 12 p.m., we'll have fun and food and fellowship here for as long as we need to that day on Saturday. Then the 25th of June, which will actually be the date, amen, of our six-year celebration, Acts 29, Church under God will be six years old, amen, 11 a.m. that morning, I will preach, 6 p.m. that evening, uh, Evangelist Brandon Gillis will preach also at 10 a.m., don't let me forget that, the School of the Spirit that Sunday morning morning i believe brother dylan my son will be coming up to teach on that praise god dylan will be preaching this coming sunday night too here on father's day evening yeah we're gonna have a service praise god hallelujah praise god hallelujah so everybody say this is what we've been doing for the last five thirsting for god thursday we've been getting ourselves in a place prepared for God to answer and save souls and to wake up the sleeping church but somebody say most importantly to outpour his spirit on us because none of these things are possible without the Holy Ghost so welcome to God's presence tonight we're not trying to be traditional from this point on I can't really tell you what's gonna happen but I'm just gonna follow the mind of the spirit I'm not looking for a you know modern sense of a meeting let's see how we can market the meeting no i just want the mind of the spirit and i'm gonna follow the holy ghost so i play that first song i told you to somebody say holy ghost we welcome you yes that's who we need holy spirit thou art worthy Welcome in this place, Holy but and Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place, Lord. healing divine no other power can save Lord but thine welcome him Holy Spirit thou art welcome 
me this place thou art welcome in this place feel all the hungry and empty within restore us so father revive your people again holy spirit thou art welcome come on this is a song but it's more of a prayer than it is a song the book of psalms song of solomon they are songs just like this song oh holy spirit thou art well it's music and lyrics but it's a message and it's communing with god that's what we ask for if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy ghost to those who ask him luke 11 13 we ask for you holy ghost we want all your gifts we want you to do what you want to with whom you want for as long as you are you're welcome you're welcome sing it church holy spirit you're welcome yes come on lay your hands on your heart and say you're welcome in this place holy spirit you're welcome in this place omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome in this place oh it ain't a church until the holy ghost comes it ain't a sanctuary until the holy ghost is welcomed hallelujah he'll come down like rain on the mown grass psalm 72 and 6 come holy ghost